All right, let me tell you a little story. When I was first transitioning into tech to become a programmer, I wanted to be at a really big tech company, like think Amazon level, Google, Facebook. You know, the ones where they pay you really good money, there's a really good work-life balance, and they serve you kombucha on tap. Okay, I would only really apply to those jobs and jobs sort of in that ecosphere, and guess what? Got rejected by all of them. I wasn't getting responses probably because I didn't look too appealing from the outside. Think about it. It's young dude from the music industry who's like really virtually no programming experience. I started to realize that there's actually this whole community of people out there who want to make a career switch, but they kind of feel lost because they come from unconventional backgrounds without having like traditional education, knowledge, skill set. When I made the switch, I was definitely intimidated, especially at first, but then I kind of began to realize that coming from an unconventional background, it's actually not such a bad thing. In fact, it's kind of a good thing. Like, it's good to be different. So let's talk about how you can leverage these differences to make that career switch that you've wanted to make. So this might seem sort of obvious, but the first thing that you want to understand is make sure that you have a clear picture of what it is that you want to do. So for me, pre-career switch, I was working in the music industry and I realized quickly that I wanted to move into tech. More specifically though, I wanted to move into a programming role and probably something to do with the web because I've always been fascinated with the web. So if you haven't made that determination already, make sure that you get clear on what that is. And next, once you've done that, you want to do the baseline research necessary to understand what are the minimum skills needed to break into this role in said industry. We're going to talk about this a little bit more later in the video, so we'll kind of wrap around, but the way to do this is as simple as going on a job search engine like LinkedIn and in the search bar typing in something like entry level and then insert the role that you are gunning for, right? Or general role that you are interested in. All right, the next thing that we're gonna talk about is the 180 exercise, at least that's what I like to call it. This was made more popular by a very big YouTuber by the name of Bria Jones. You're gonna take a piece of paper, you're going to fold the piece of paper in half and on the one side of the piece of paper, you are going to write down all the things that you feel like you seemingly can't do that are holding you back from making this career switch, all those self-limiting beliefs. For me, it was, I don't have the schooling, the experience and the background to become a programmer. My mind doesn't think like a programmer. I don't have the time to make the switch and become a programmer. Next, you are going to flip the piece of paper that you just wrote on. And on the other side, you are going to write what it would look like if you took all the fears that you just wrote and basically 180 them, flip them on their head. So I'm educated and smart and I can do this because I've seen that other people are capable of doing it and it will just take hard work and persistence. I don't care if my mind works like a computer or not. I will train it to work like a computer. I do have enough time and I understand that it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. I basically just rewrote my whole entire narrative. And the point of this exercise is to turn all the negatives that you have, all the self-limiting beliefs, all the fears, turn all those into positives, into this sort of abundant way of looking at it. It's kind of like an excuseless mindset, right? So nobody's pitying you, so it's like, why should you pity yourself? All right, next we're gonna talk about what is your unfair advantage? So Ali Abdal, another really big YouTuber, he talks about this a lot. I don't care how deep of a hole you're in right now, you're going to write down one to three things that you excel at professionally. And if you don't excel at anything professionally right now, then write down one to three things that you naturally excel at You know, in your personal life that you could at least somewhat transfer to your career. Honestly, it could have nothing to do with the career that you're trying to transfer to. That's fine for now, just write a few things down. I don't care how unrelated you think it is, you're going to find a way to relate it to the career that you are transitioning to. How can you take this as an unfair advantage? What do you have that other people might not have that maybe you didn't think that you had yourself? So for me, I came from the music industry where I picked up some salesy related experience, right? Even if I didn't have any technical background, I knew that I could sell myself. Just get me into the room and get me interviewing 
and I can figure it out from there. I can learn the technical stuff. I don't know, maybe for you, you're a farmer and you're trying to become a corporate operations manager or something. Maybe over the last couple of months, you've like reorganized the barn to better optimize for peak farm productivity performance or something. And now your business goals are a lot more aligned with what you want them to be. S something like that. Great, you now have relatable experience that you can now leverage your farming career into your blooming corporate operations career. I know it doesn't sound like the most relatable thing, but you have to kind of get crafty and unconventional because again, you're coming from an unconventional background. So we kind of got to be a little bit improvisational, right? Is that a word? It's not so much about where we come from and who we are. It's more about how we leverage our current situation, get creative and figure out how to sell ourselves with what we currently have and what we can build on. All right, next, I alluded to this earlier in the video, but do the bare minimum required to break into the role that you want. I'll keep it 100% that because you are coming from an unconventional background, the cards at the very least are going to be slightly stacked against you. I mean, think about who you're competing with, probably people who come from more traditional backgrounds. So that's why in my humble opinion, when you're doing a full on career transition, you shouldn't shoot for the stars. I mean, go ahead if you want. I'm just giving you the keys to the car. It's up to you if you wanna go ahead and drive it. I'll expound on this. All right, so naturally more high paying, prestigious roles, especially those roles that demand a specialized skill set. So think like law, becoming a doctor, maybe becoming an engineer. They tend to demand a more competitive bare minimum. That's especially why if you're coming from a more unconventional background, you want to be practical. So for me, the contrast looked like this. Go for an entry level goal as a software engineer at Google or go for, you know, a junior developer role at like a 20 person startup where I could learn and grow. I mean, I would learn and grow in both scenarios, but what do you think is the more practical scenario given where I was with my unconventional background in the music industry? Like it's easier to shoot for the stars later down the road when you've garnered more experience over time rather than right away. Just get in and start learning. The goal here is to break into a career, get your foot in the door, and you wanna understand what are the bare requirements needed to do so, to just break in and start just getting some experience. And at the same time, keep on building on your unfair advantage and leverage it as much as you can. Okay, the last point that I'm gonna make, be the pimple that can't be popped. I was debating how I was gonna name this point and I just decided to go <laughs> a rather disgusting sounding uh, name. I thought it was kind of funny, so whatever. I alluded to this earlier, but again, the cards are likely at the very least stacked against you. You have to assume that you're competing with people who are coming from more traditional background than you. So your mentality, from this point on is going to be that of sheer persistence, sheer will, driven by the want to just achieve this goal. Be the pimple that can't be popped. That's right, people. And this is why I love stories like Michael Jordan's seven year struggle for that reason, or David McElroy, wait, I think it's McElroy, his allegory of the diamond mine. And the general theme here is to just keep going. And you're going to hear that theme a lot on my channel. That is what separates most people. And when the going gets tough, you have to just keep going. So in summary, develop a clear picture of where it is that you want to be and do the research necessary to understand what it is the baseline requirements are to get your foot in the door. Understand your self-limiting beliefs and address them by doing the 180 flip exercise. Determine what your unfair advantage is and leverage it. Do the bare minimum needed to break into the industry. Be persistent because persistence triumphs over talent every single time. I promise you. All right, thank you so much for joining me. Obviously, you know what to do if you like this content like, subscribe, and comment. Let me know what you want me to talk about next. I need ideas, I always need ideas. Until next time, peace.